this is Scott McDonald and DrDemographics.com, and we're doing a little bit of a webinar. Now, this topic today may sound a little odd. Now, remember, our purpose is try to find the locations that are going to work best for you and to share with you the facts about those locations that are going to give you the best, well, chance of success. So we often talk about demographics, how many people are moving to an area, how many are moving out, the incomes that they're making, or even the types of employment that people have. So with that in mind, there are some locations in the country that are showing a great deal of promise and others that are having a problem. I want to bring up today a topic that may not sound like it's strictly demographic related or site specific, but it really is. Here's the thing. Statistics that are demographic are often about people, but I want to talk about other factors like the retail industry and how retail is a sign of a place that's doing well or doing poorly. Now, you may not think, well, wait a second, I'm in healthcare. I'm not selling stuff like you would in a retail store. And you may say, well, what difference is that going to make? The fact is a retail bunch of facts are an indication that you're likely to do well or poorly in the future. You see, people have to have money and credit to buy things, and that includes healthcare. So with that in mind, I want to talk a little bit about how well retail factors, statistics, are going to determine the quality and the desirability of locations in which you're going to make one of the biggest and most expensive decisions of your life. You got to figure out where to put a practice and how to evaluate whether that practice is going to work out well for you or not. And as I mentioned, demographics may not be the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to choosing facts about a location that are desirable. And you may say flat out, healthcare is not related to retail. But remember, it is not possible really to separate the retail potential of a location and the desirability of that location for healthcare. The two are so closely related, well, you'd be kind of a dummy to separate them in your mind. So for a few minutes, let me go on. Professional practices are not tied to the retail market directly, but if the local retail market hits a home run, in other words, it does really well, or does a belly flop, does it make a difference to the viability of an office in that area? And the answer is simply this, yeah, it is. Those locations that show signs of life or animal spirits, as demographers sometimes put it, when it comes to retail activity, well, they're going to notice it's going to help them a lot. So not only are you looking for the number of noses or belly buttons, that's another thing that demographers make jokes of, but really about the way people are spending money, their credit worthiness, and what they're spending it on. The question, it really has to be asked in this way. Do practices, doctors, feel the pull of economic gravity? Well, the answer is yes. So in other words, if a location is showing there's a lot of sales, there's a lot of money exchanging hands, there's a lot of employment, yeah, it's going to be a very positive thing for the practice to have. You don't separate those two things. Now, the, the relationship may seem tenuous, but it's not. So we hope that when things are doing well, in other words, you've heard the expression, a rising tide lifts all boats, that this is so, and that a floundering economy won't affect practices in their production and collection. In short, if everybody who lives and works in an area is making more money, healthcare practices do much better. Now, it's an odd thing when I first started speaking in dental schools and medical schools that you'd think, man, these are really poor places. Uh, what's going on? Maybe there is no relationship between the local economy and practices. But I want to remind you, these schools are very often looking for potential patients to come into their clinics at the schools, and therefore they're seeking actively neighborhoods where there are a lot of potential patients to come in. 
I mean, after all, that's what their schools are for, is to teach young doctors. But if you really think about it, economic gravity is real, and therefore you don't want to be in a place that is suffering economically. And this is manifested in retail sales. I think, and I even fear, that a poor economy will not be denied for long in the United States. I, in other words, I think we're going to go through an economic downturn. A lot of very bright demographers are saying that's true. The public can only ignore its health care for only so long. So while people are not rushing out to go to the doctor or to seek a dentist or to look for an optometrist, they do have needs, and those needs cannot be long denied. They're going to have to go. But in those locations where there's an economic dip or downturn, and it looks like it's going to last for a while, all of the practices in that area are going to suffer. Yes, I recognize that there's a big movement to have the government pay for everything. And therefore, they're saying, oh, well, uh, healthcare is kind of disconnected from the local economy overall. I think that's not true. What I'm saying in this slide is, it's not something that can be denied very long. National economic trends will depress the currency. So as an example, is inflation going to hurt healthcare offices and practices? I believe that absolutely it is going to hurt them. If you look at just one factor that I've talked about in other podcasts, how much it costs to hire someone to come to work and the need that people have for a job, a good paying job, is not a simple relationship. But what about more localized trends like unemployment and retail activity? So the local microeconomy is manifested by employment. How much are people looking for work? What are they willing to settle for? What are people's buying habits like? Now, certainly, there's a large amount of vandalism going on in some areas, and that's depressing the retail market. But those aren't statistics that you should really bake into the cake too much. You've got to find a place where people have money and are likely to spend it. And if they're likely to spend it, healthcare is one of those places, particularly with the most affluent and the oldest parts of the population. In other words, seniors with money are terrific, and you need to know the relationship they have to the sites you're considering going to. History teaches us that local trends like labor participation rates follow faster and harder than the national trends. So labor participation and inflation and retail activity are local trends. They tend to have a little shorter window. And you've got to know those trends in order to determine if the place you want to practice is viable and will continue to be viable. So you're looking at those factors about the population that will matter most and their localized trends and often have a shorter window. But believe me, they're important. Now, what does it all mean? That if your practice is located in a local sinkhole of economy, your bottom line will suffer. Now, it doesn't take much logic to make a decision, is this place that I'm putting my practice and the place I am seeking patients up, going up in its economy or going down? Labor participation, in other words, the number of people and the percentage of people who have a job, particularly a well-paying job, matters a lot. Some people who are in healthcare and this is government-related health care, will tell you, oh, no, no, we've got this, we've got Medicare and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, piece of cake. But the reality is a sinkhole economy is going to hurt your practice, particularly in the long term. Regardless of the national or regional trends, the microeconomy, and I'm talking usually an area of 10 or around 10 zip codes, and near demographics, in other words, a population that tends to hang together as a demographic unit, will be great or they will be terrible for your practice. So what I'm saying is I want you to 
to pay attention to the local economy. Yeah, the national economy, we can't do much about. But the localized economy in that 10 zip code area is going to make a tremendous difference to the success of your practice, your bottom line, over the long term. Does that mean that you only want to go where people are making lots of money? No, no, I don't mean that at all. In fact, ironically, sometimes people who are in the worst health or uh, an age group that is not doing well or has an economic difficulty are the places where the needs or demands of healthcare are greatest. That's why it's always good to keep in mind or, or keep your eye on the poverty rates and the unemployment rates as being positive or semi-positive indicators. But I would not make that the long-term factors that you most want to look for. You want a stable economy and a population that is increasing in size and income. That's what you want. Therefore, choose wisely when it comes to your demographic disposition because there is a limit on what best practices can do for your practice economy. And I mean best practices in that you may assume that you can offer discounts. You may assume that you put out the word that people will want to come in. And it may work, but it's not the only thing that is going to matter. You've got to have a practice that will relate to local people who are employed and people who live within the area that you're in. That's what I mean by your demographic disposition. So if you want to know where should I go, we want to talk to you about what the other factors that are influencing the potential of your profitability and practice. It isn't just that there is not a lot of competition, or it isn't just that there are a lot of people moving in or out of the area. It's got to be something about the demographic disposition overall that is going to determine whether the place you're considering going is going to give you a good return on its investment. This is not a simple calculation. Now, I want you to keep in mind, this may sound a little negative, a little, but every community has some kind of economic weakness. It may be that people are poor or not getting jobs or are getting in an industry that is likely to disappear. Those are potential weaknesses for the areas that you're considering. I get it, and they're important for you to know. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be absolutely negative, but you should certainly know them. But when it happens that there are weaknesses that are too great, and I'll say unemployment is one of the things that I'm worried about right now, particularly large industries that are on the way down you may have to move or consider new locations. It's a simple fact of life that if you look at some communities, I'll give you Detroit, for example. Detroit used to be a wonderful place. Blue collar, heavily unionized, big money coming in. It was wonderful. But it died for several reasons, not the least of which is the socioeconomics for the area were terrible. There was a, an anti middle class, anti-white person, anti-union disposition for Detroit. And that's one reason it sank to the bottom. Baltimore has the same problems. Now, I'm not trying to pick on Baltimore or Detroit. I am just going to say you have to understand why the weaknesses in the local economy exist and what's likely to change over time. And a good demographer can tell you those things. Selling out may be a logical strategy. And what I mean by that is, there are times that you're going to go into an area and the macroeconomics, the regional demographics, the economy, employment are going to implode. And there are some places that within the next three years are going to implode. You may not like it. I don't like it. But it's something that is likely to be the case. I give you the East Bay, Sacramento, like Oakland, uh, California. That is one place that you better be very careful about what you're getting into because the property values are very high. The costs of employment are particularly high. The cost of doing business is scary. 
So when you see these trends accumulate, it might be time to contact your local demographer and say, should we stick around here or should we look for the exits? And I am telling you, some places are so bad, you want to look for the exits. And it sounds like you're quitting. I want you to survive. I want you to thrive. And that's why I'm saying this. These trends can take 10 to 20 years to work themselves out. Now, what happened in Baltimore and happened in Detroit is not a new phenomenon. It didn't happen overnight. What has happened in parts of Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, parts of Philadelphia, Chicagoland, these are places that I've had faith in, certain neighborhoods in them, but they are certainly challenging the assumptions of success long term. So, yeah, maybe you ought to start thinking about the strategy of where else you should go. There are some exceptionally great places where the employment is picking up, population is improving. The character of the people is great, but there are other places that are looking worse and worse. I want you to look around. Now, new practice configurations are not a sign of failure. When I say this, I'm saying you have lots of options of how you formulate a practice. Sometimes it means you're going to have lots of uh, non-doctors working in the practice as a way to mitigate costs overhead, in other words, of being in that location. That's a, it's a strategy. It's not necessarily the, always the best, but it's certainly realistic. And the smart money is on those people who can look at the practice configurations and make adjustments so that the location can turn itself around. There are options to locations even that are having a struggle right now. But I want you to understand, you've got to be thinking all the time about how the configuration of the practice, owners, providers, the range of services, equipment, can make a difference in the survivability and viability of a practice at that location. Now, look, we can help you find locations as we consider geographic options. Now, I know this may sound kind of weird, but, you know, a lot of people assume that healthcare is only determined by a, a city, a large geographic definition of a population. But the reality is going two or three zip codes away may be also an alternative to where you're going to go and still make a lot of money. Your current patient base may stick with you. They may not. But knowing where people are is what I mean when I talk about geographic options. So I look at the population distribution by zip code as being a determiner of locations that might offer to you and your practice some viable alternatives to what you've currently got. So if a, a doctor comes and says, oh, this place just sucks hose water, it's terrible. I get that. Where can you go without having to move your place of residence to still serve the population, the patient base that you want to be in? Or would a simple and subtle shift in location matter? Maybe the next zip code over, that can make a difference. Now, local and retail reverses are not to be taken lightly. There is a sign of economic, a bigger economic malaise than you might have thought. Now, here's what I'm kind of saying. If we were to look at some coastal cities, uh, East Coast and West Coast, uh, retail challenges, uh, local employment issues can often happen because one major employer moved or one that was anticipated to open is not. When things like that happen, practices, you, in other words, doctors, can make decisions to make subtle shifts on where they're practicing and how they're promoting their practices and what they're offering. It can make a big difference, but you've got to be light on your feet and, and think a little bit creatively. One of the things we do at Dr. Demographics is consider the range of options that you might have in any location, just keep in mind, there are some times you got to move. Now, when you want to talk to Dr. Demographics, 
please visit us at drdemographics.com. This podcast and lots of others are offered free of charge. This is our longer version. We have a shorter version of this that I want you to look at. I remember what I'm saying right now this month. Look, a lot of doctors just need to talk to another person, not like a broker, but rather a demographer to say, where can I go? Where are my alternatives? And think outside the box. A half hour discussion that is based on the statistics in your area can do a great deal to help you. So visit us. A telephone consultation at Dr. Demographics is not very much. But I also say we've got data reports that will take into account the best sites that you'll find within the region that you're considering. And sometimes the smart money is going to someone who knows the location and its demography and its future potential. So please visit us. I look forward to talking to you with one of me or my team. And take care. Thanks so much for watching.